Hello, I'm Gary Bender. I'm a farm advisor with UC Cooperative Extension in San Diego County, and I cover parts of Temecula here in the Avocado Grove area. And today we're in a high-density avocado grove in Temecula, and we're going to install a lysimeter. Now, a lysimeter is, measure, is used for measuring uh, salts and nitrates flowing below the root system in, in avocados. And as you probably have heard previously, avocados have a lot of small feeder roots in the top eight inches and below that you can you can catch the leachate so this will be used to catch the leachate and monitor our salts through the irrigation se uh, season during the year so here's how we do this we are going to uh, this is lysimeter we're going to uh, put it in a bucket of water overnight and then the next morning we're going to put the cork in the tube in the cork and get it over the lip, you twist it just a little bit to get the cork in. And then we're going to use, while it's in the water, we're going to use this thing to pull a vacuum on it. We'll install this in here. We'll pull a vacuum, and that brings the air bubbles through here and gets the air bubbles out of our little tip here. Okay, then it'll bring some water in from our bucket of water. So we're ready to go. So when we take it out to, take it out to the field, and we're going to dig a hole. Uh, you can use a three-quarter inch pipe, and we've done that today. We've used a pipe such as this, and we just pound it into the soil about the depth we wanted. We want about 10 inch depth on, in this case. We're going to just pour, pull it out and get ready to install it. Now, before we install it, we want to take the cork out and just tip the water out that we have in here. We have a nice wet tip, but it'll be empty. Okay, so we're ready to install it. We are installing this today about 18 inches away from the sprinkler, and we're going to be about, in this case, about six feet, five, five to six feet away from the trunk. We want to put this into a wet hole, so we call this mudding it in, and we're going to pour some water into the hole here. And then all we do is just set it in and you can see the water comes up to the surface and we are probably at about uh, a little bit, not the nine to 10 inch depth at this point in time. I'm gonna put some soil to backfill a little bit. And take a hammer very carefully, just pack it down Okay, now we have a vacuum set in here because we've, uh, while it was in the bucket of water this morning, we pulled a vacuum and we pressed our little clip here, so that's created a vacuum. Okay, and it's, the tube is empty. We poured the water out. We put it back in. We poured the water out. Then we pulled a vacuum, and we're ready to install it. So we are going to be checking this with a little syringe here the day after the irrigation. This is uh, one day after the irrigation has occurred. We're back in here in, in Temecula the next day. We're going to take our sample from the lysimeter. So what we'll do, we'll attach our syringe here. It's best to wet the tip of this up a little bit. Makes it go on a little easier. Release our vacuum. And pull our sample. Go up about 20 milliliters here. Pull it out. And then we'll go check this with our meter. I think today we're going to be checking EC, which will measure the salts in the water. Okay, now we're going to take a look at uh, our salt content in our water from our leachate sample. And, you know, it's relative. If our, our normal district water around here is running about 0 0.7 to 0 0.9 EC, uh, an EC of 1 is about 640 parts per million. So some of these meters run it, uh, will give you readings in EC. Some will give you readings in parts per million. But you can translate them back and forth. Well, EC of 1 equals 640 ppm. So we're going to check our water that we're irrigating with first. This particular uh, divide, little pin here, all you do is put it in the water, press the button,
and it comes up with a reading of 464 ppm. That's about a reading of a, that's our irrigation water. That's about 0 0.7. Okay, we're going to put it in our water here that we're going to get from our syringe that we took from our lysimeter. Press the button. Okay, we're coming up with a reading of about 1.1, and uh, that's pretty good. The, ir the grower is irrigating uh, pretty well here. He's leaching his salts out. Now, according to the book, uh, that we have some research done by the University of California, Riverside, back in the probably 1970s, uh, if you reach an EC of about 1.3 in, in, the, in the leachate from the lysimeter, that's about as high as you want to go. If you get in, much higher than that, you're going to have to increase your leaching, uh, run your irrigation for a longer period of time. If you get up to about an e EC of 1.8, uh, you expect to get a 10% loss in yield. If you get up to an EC of 2.5, expect to get a, a reduction in yield of about 25%. And that's, that's a catastrophe. You're not going to make any money at that. So you really have to increase your irrigation. Now, we of course, we advise growers to use SIMUS to calculate their irrigation. But what happens is uh, salts build up below the root zone, even with SIMUS. And you have to add some extra. Now, uh, in some cases, I, I tell the growers once a month, just irrigate for about twice as long as they their normal or normal irrigation. Sometimes that's a 24-hour irrigation, but that will depend on your sprinkler output, your flow, and your soil, and lots of other things.